for the November expansion, we're adding in brand new faction pirate destroyers and faction pirate battlecruisers for both the Garustas pirates and for the Angel Cartel. The Garustas are getting the Mamba and the Alligator, which combine the missile firepower of the Corax and the Drake, which they're based on, with Garustas drone bays and shield resistance bonuses for both high DPS and high durability. The Angel Cartel, on the other hand, are getting the Mechable and the Kisriel, both of which feature high projectile DPS and fall off bonuses, while also having the high mobility players would expect from the Angel Cartel, with the warp speed bonuses and having top speeds for their class. We decided to pick destroyers and battlecruisers this year because there aren't any pirate destroyers and battlecruisers right now, and we know players have been asking for them. Also, it felt like a great time because last year we added the Navy Destroyers to the game as well as extended the Navy Battlecruiser lineup and so it just felt like a great time to do these ships. The design and balance of these ships were very heavenly inspired by the existing pirate ships. So for example, the Alligator, which is the Grooster's Battlecruiser, is essentially what happens when you take the Kodari Draco and the Grooster's Hilaho and just merge them together. And that's kind of the approach we went with all four of them. Players looking to get their hands on these brand new ships will be able to do so by taking part in the insurgency content that's coming in November. You'll be able to choose to align with either the Angel Cartel or the Grooster's Pirates. In doing so and helping them spread the corruption and chaos across the battlefield and capturing objectives for them, you'll earn loyalty points. You can then spend those loyalty points in their brand new Militia Loyalty Point stores which will have blueprint copies for the brand new ships in addition to a whole host of other cool offers for you. In the Havoc expansion we're adding destroyers and battlecruisers for just the Angel Cartel and the Roosters Pirates but in the future we definitely want to add destroyers and battlecruisers for the Serpentis, Sanchez Nation, Blood Raiders and the other pirate factions. What I think players will enjoy the most about these ships though is finally being able to get a hold of them and fly them in the game. I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of creative setups you can come up with them and where you use them, whether it's in Factional Warfare, the Abyss, killing Nullsec players or maybe even adding these new ships to your killboard if you're an anti-pirate. In the Uprising expansion and in the Viridian expansion, the art team did a great job extending and polishing existing hulls like the Navy Comrant and the Navy Phoenix, but this time the models are completely brand new and I love seeing them and I can't wait for you to experience them in the game as well. A number of years ago we had introduced some concept art, which players had seen, of an Angel Titan. It was a really cool concept. Um, it was actually the Angel's logo when viewed from the top down turned into a ship, effectively. Uh, and people really loved this. It was it was very cool. It made a big splash. And boy, have we been hearing about that ever since. Um, so it's about time that we finally actually made this thing a reality. Uh, the concept was revisited by our art team, and they came out with something just truly fantastic looking, uh, which is now known as the Azariel, which will be coming to you in November. So when we were looking at the Angel Titan design, we had these older concepts that had been floating around for some years. Looked at the base design there and, and saw there was something there to work with. We kind of took another pass on those, did a few concepts to support that idea that was the original design, but modified it to, to our kind of current standards. We are also looking at the angel ship design um, as a whole, kind of where we want to take that, because we're creating more than one ship. We're drawing inspiration from uh, animal skulls, insect armor plates, and, and things like that. So when we kind of go through that process of iterating on the designs, we do paintovers, blockouts with 3D, finalize the design, and then it's very much an iterative process of, of taking you to the final piece. Yeah, my part in, in all of this is working with the artists, uh, finalizing the designs, nudging it a bit left and right, if you will, then working with the 3D artists as the project moves uh, down into that part of the pipeline, then working with VFX animation, just guiding it in, in the, the direction we want to take it. Yeah, I'm really happy with the updates on the Angel ships and, and the Titan especially, people have been waiting for for a long time. 
And yeah, some mean looking machines coming your way. When I first started taking a look at the design of the Azarial, I needed to figure out how to merge the angel bonuses uh, that are very typical on angel ships with a titan. At first glance, the angel bonuses don't really seem like they would apply well to a titan. Uh, angel ships all have a warp speed bonus as part of a default Rachel trait, which you can find on all angel ships. And Titans, being the largest of the capital ships, are not particularly known for moving very much. So what good is a warp speed bonus? Uh, and when I started looking at this, I tried to figure out, are there other ways that we could twist this, where we thematically have something that is reminiscent of a warp speed bonus, but might be a little bit more useful? Uh, maybe something like jump range or fuel conservation or something along those lines. And after a lot of thought, I wasn't really satisfied with any of these answers. And so uh, when I was putting together a prototype, I actually just put the classic warp speed bonus on the ship. As I thought about it some more, it turns out that this warp speed bonus actually works really well for this kind of gameplay. It reduces the uh, time for a Titan to get safe, um, which gives them just a little bit more of an edge. Uh, this hyper dunking gameplay also usually involves a Ragnarok in most cases, um, largely because the Ragnarok has some of the highest alpha damage in the game. Um, the large artillery guns can put out a large heap of damage in just a single shot, kills the target, and warps away. Um, with this angel ship as well, angels often use projectile guns, we can have the same sort of a situation. And so I realized what I was designing was really the peak hyper dunking titan at this point. Um, which I was like, all right, cool. I can, I can roll with that. Uh, the ultimate hyper dunking Titan. Let's just lean into that. And I began to tune the stats around that in particular. Uh, when it came to tuning the stats, I was roughly aiming for DPS that was just shy of the Vanquisher, which is the highest DPS Titan in the game. So it's not quite the highest damage, but it has the highest alpha. Uh, so in terms of immediate damage applied to target, the Azarial will be the pinnacle. Over the last couple years, the Pirate Titans have had a pretty wide range of build materials and ways in which the blueprints are acquired and how much those blueprints cost. With the introduction of the Azarial, adding yet another Pirate Titan, we wanted to make sure that we could simplify the field, uh, partly because it makes balancing for us easier. We can make sure that the Titans are all comparative to one another without having to worry so much about their cost and partly to make sure that the ships are actually reasonable for you uh, to, to acquire and build. In so doing, we've brought the build materials down for all pirate titans to the equivalent of a Tech 1 Titan. With this simplification of the build materials, it'll take you just as much material to build a Vanquisher as it takes to build an Erebus, or to build a Komodo as it takes to build a Leviathan, or an Azarial. With the build materials coming down, we wanted to move some of the cost of that Pirate Titan premium, which we still want to keep around. These are intended to be the, the pinnacle ships uh, in the game. We wanted to move some of that premium to uh, the blueprint acquisition cost. So Pirate Titan blueprints have been pretty expensive for a while, as anyone who has attempted to buy one knows. Um, the only source for many of the blueprints was coming from pirate shipyards. Uh, for example, the Komodo or the Moloch, which were only available from Garistus or Blood Raider shipyards. Or for the Vanquisher, which was available from the LP store for the Serpentis. In the Serpentis LP store, the Vanquisher was a bit of an outlier again. All of its cost was in its build materials, whereas the LP store side was relatively cheap uh, comparatively speaking, to the other Titans. Um, so we needed to increase the base cost of the LP required in order to purchase the, uh, the blueprint while simultaneously planning to bring down the build materials. Having that upfront premium on our side makes it a little bit easier for us to adjust the valuation of the chips without having to make an adjustment to the blueprint materials, which is a little bit more impactful uh, every time we want to adjust the position of the ships in the ecosystem. There's been a lot of desire from players to finally see an Angel Titan added to the game, and we knew this when we went into the project, and so we've put a lot of love into it, both from the design side and the art side, and we hope you'll love it too. We look forward to seeing them in space.